Philosophy has long asked the question, just what is reality? While its daughter, physics, has been more precise in its questioning and has instead been asking, what is it made of? One of the first theories supplied to answer this question was given by Democritus almost 2,500 years ago when he put forth his atoms in the void metaphysic. Thus, as the father of atomism, he set up the notion that empty space is nothing but a kind of container. However, modern quantum field theory paints a much different picture, and no longer is space thought of as just an empty void, but rather can have properties, and in effect, can be said to be doing something. Quantum field theory tells us the fundamental object or objects of the universe are unbounded fields, or rather, a single unified field that is made up of many distinct, yet working in parallel and superimposed, fields. These fields are ubiquitous and pervade the entire universe, and it may help us to think of them as fabrics or sheets of reality but we must remember that these sheets don't stack on top of one another, but are instead enmeshed within one another and occupy the same space. We will see that all fundamental forces and even material objects are nothing but the result of energy momentum moving around and responding to things like charge and spin, and it's their complex relationships that give rise to matter and the fundamental forces that we know. Now, I've used a lot of fancy language and I haven't even defined a field yet, or a quantum for that matter. So, a field is defined as a property of space that can have physical effects. The magnetic field, of which I think we're all most familiar, the father of fields, Michael Faraday, would say that it is just a property of mere space. And when he says mere, he just wants to say that the magnetic field is present in the fabric of existence itself. It's already there. I take Faraday's view on this, and I think the field is there, always was there, and always will be there. It's just you need to bring in the right sort of energy to activate it, or turn it on, if you will. Thus, the very fabric of reality is a magnetic field that allows lines of force to transmit energy momentum through thin air, through nothing, but really it's not nothing because it's a magnetic field. And there's also an electromagnetic field, and a Higgs field, and a gravitational field, and a quark field, and I, I'm sure you get the picture. It's all fields all the way down. Now you might be wondering what happened to the atoms of Democritus. And in quantum field theory, all they are are energetic vibrations confined to their particular field. In fact, these minimal excitations of the field are what are called quanta, and a single one of which is called a quantum. And sometimes people think of quanta as particles, but they're not. They can sometimes behave as particles, which gives rise to the intuition that they might be particles, but this is just because they're an all-or-nothing entity. They come into existence, they vanish from existence, and they change their configuration everywhere and always instantaneously. And be because of their all or nothing nature, it makes it look like they can be a particle. So the word quantum does not refer to the size or magnitude of a particle, but is just referring to the discrete nature of this packet of energy momentum fluctuating in this field. Further, all quanta are described by what's called a wave function. And by consulting the wave function of a quantum, you can know almost everything about that system, only with a little bit of uncertainty, because you can only calculate probabilities in quantum field theory. And there was also this guy named Heisenberg who existed, who was pretty smart. So that's the basics of modern quantum field theory. It's just a mere scratching of the surface, and we're going to go into it a little bit more next time when we look at some of the major quantum fields. So, to sum up, there exist properties of space that allow quanta of energy momentum to dance about and fluctuate in these fields, responding to spin and charge, 
and this is what gives rise to all of the macroscopic phenomena of which we are familiar, such as matter and the fundamental forces being the most obvious. So that's it for a brief introduction to modern QFT. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the like button and subscribe for more content in the future so you don't miss out on maybe better explanations of what these fields are and what they're doing and kind of how they work. And as always, thanks for watching. So what, what is more important? Is it the particle aspect of reality or is it the field aspect of reality? It's fields.